Hi, this is Tyler with Homesphere Technologies. In this video, we'll go through the basics of setting up and using our HS4 home automation software. HS4 is available as a download for Windows, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. It is also available pre-installed on our Home Troller line of home automation controllers. For more information about HS4 downloads and our controllers, see the links in the video description. For those of you who have installed HS4, simply launch the program. If you're using a controller, connect it to power and to Ethernet. At this point, HS4 will be accessible on any computer on the same local network. To access the software, open a web browser and go to find.homeseer.com. This page will always display a hyperlink to any Homeseer software running on your network, even if the IP address changes. Click the name of your controller or PC and you'll be directed into the HS4 web interface. The first page you'll be presented with is the Homeseer HS4 registration screen, asking for your license ID and password. This information can be found printed on the bottom of your controller or in an email that was sent to you after purchase. If you purchased an upgrade license, you'll need to enter in your HS3 license information in Step 2 in order to proceed. If you're moving from an HS3 system, regardless of the use of an upgrade license, Steps 3 and 4 will allow you to update your MyHS account in order to update any third-party services you're using. Step 5 will allow you to set up a user account for the system. This can be for local network connections only, or for local and remote connections using the MyHS Remote Access Service. MyHS is a secure remote connection option that will allow you to access your system from our mobile application as well as from a web browser. This service will also allow you to integrate cloud services like Amazon Echo, Google Home Assistant, and IFTTT. If you intend to use this service, enter your existing MyHS login information, or if you have not yet created an account, enter your email address and a password. Your password must contain a minimum of eight characters with at least one capital letter, one number, and one special character. The final setup of your MyHS account will take place in a later step. In step six, you have the opportunity to configure a few important settings. First, select whether or not you wish to log in when accessing the system locally. Next, select your preferred temperature scale. And lastly, select your location. Location settings will determine the sunrise and sunset times within the software. These times can be used as scheduling options when creating events. Once this has been selected, click Continue and then Finish. Now that your software has been registered, a MyHS account can be created. To register your account, go to myhs.homeseer.com and click Register. Make sure to use the same email address and password from Step 5 of the registration process. And then enter your HS4 license ID and password and click Register. Once you have registered, an email will be sent with the link to verify the account. Once you've clicked this link, your account will be ready to use. Go ahead and log into the MyHS login page and click Access System. This will direct you back into the web interface. HS4 is able to communicate with many different types of hardware and services through the use of software plugins or integrations. These plugins act as software bridges between HS4 and the hardware you want to control. To install a plugin, click the Plugins tab at the top of the web interface and select Add. This will bring you to the HS4 updater. On this page, HS4 and legacy HS3 plugins will be split into two sections. Most HS3 plugins will work in HS4, however the user interface for these plugins will not be mobile friendly and will require a computer's web browser to set up. Once you have found the plugin you need, select it and press Install. Once the installation is completed, you'll be brought to the Installed Plugins page where you'll need to enable the plugin and register it if required. Each HS4 plugin has an easy-to-follow setup wizard, but if you need more in-depth instructions, setup guides can be found in the Homeseer support knowledge base. Check the video description for links. Once a device has been added to HS4, it will be visible from within the device list. Your devices will be displayed in the all-new grid view with the floor and room values and device name shown in the top left of each card. The main device feature will be below the name and any additional features at the top right. Here we have a battery-powered door sensor located in the first floor living room. The main feature displays the door sensor status and the two additional features display the status of the battery and the tamper sensor. 
Another example is this home sear wall switch that has just been added to the system with the default name, floor, and room value. Its main feature is the switch control. This allows you to control the device and displays the load's current status. Its additional feature is the central scene device. This shows how many times the switch paddle has been pressed. This can be used to trigger events. To update the switch's information, I'll click on the name to access the device's configuration page. Here we have basic and advanced options for the device. The first thing I'll do is update the name. Since we're here, I'll go ahead and enable the voice command option. This will allow the device to be controlled through the Amazon Echo or Google Home Assistant. Now I'll update the floor value, and then the room value from a list of options already set in my system. The last thing I'm going to do here is add the switch to the lights category as an additional filtering option. Now I'll click save at the bottom to be brought back to the device list. Now that the device is a proper name and filtering options, it will be easy to find in the device list. To filter devices, use these options at the top left. You can filter by floor, room, and category. Here I'll select the lights category and click save. And as you can see, only my lighting devices are visible, including my newly named overhead light. The last major feature of note in the device list is the ability to switch between grid view and the traditional list view. To switch between views, use the icons in the top right corner. The software includes an easy to use event engine. Before we get into creating an event, it's important to understand what an event actually is. An event consists of an action or a sequence of actions that are set in motion by a trigger that may or may not have conditions tied to it. To put it simply, an event waits for a trigger to fire. This can be the time of day or a device's status change, like a motion sensor detecting motion. Once this occurs, an action or multiple actions are executed. This could be a light turning on, a security system being armed, or a text message being sent. In this example, I'm going to create an event that turns off a light at a set time. To start, I'll give my event a name. I like my event names to clearly state what the event does, so I'll call it Living Room Lights Off at 11 p.m. After it's named, the first thing an event needs is a trigger. Open the Trigger menu and select the Time Is. In the next menu, we need to select one of the many time-related triggers. Because I want my event to fire at a set time, I'm going to select the Time Is This. This will give me the ability to enter the exact time, 11 p.m. Once the time has been entered, click the Save icon. Now we can add an action. Open the drop-down menu and select Control a Device. In the Add Device drop-down menu, we'll be given a list of any controllable device from the device list. I'll select one of my living room lights and then the specific feature that I want to control, which is the switch. And I want it to turn off, so I will set the control to off. To add multiple devices to an action, use the Add Device menu and repeat the last step. To complete the setup of your event, click the Save icon. This event will now trigger at 11 p.m. every day and turn off both living room lights. But let's say we only want this event to trigger on certain days. We can do this by adding a condition. A condition is a true or false statement that can be added to an event. In this case, our condition is going to be true on specific days of the week. To add a condition, click the plus symbol here and expand the condition menu. Select the date or day is, and then in the following menu, select the day is. Now I'll just select the days that I want my event to work on and click save. This concludes the basics of HS4 setup. Links to additional support documentation will be linked in the video description. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to our support department by email at support at homeseer.com. And as always, take care.